hello, Eelquix. Il I don't believe we've spoken yet. You see a short, rotund, rotund man with a perplexed expression on his face. From the lines on his loose skin, it looks like it's not too uncommon. He carries a flagon of ale that looks like it's in the process of being emptied. Rapidly, in between swallows, he speaks in a gentle voice, so quiet that you can barely hear his words. Hello, traveler. My name is Ilquix. Can I be of some assistance to you? Greetings. I would like to ask some questions. What did you want to know, my friend? Who exactly are you? I... I am but a humble man, with a slight, flowery, poetical bent, and a tendency towards the supernatural. I regret that I have none of my supplies here, or I should be most, most eager to teach you the ways of power. Perhaps some time later. Like a priest? What can you tell me about this place? This place? The Smoldering Corpse Tavern. A fine establishment. With a fine owner. Barkus is a true gentleman, and ambitious to, incre to increase his standing to boot. These, I feel, are the most useful qualities one can possess. They drive people. What can you tell me of the patrons? The patrons of this tavern are many and varied. I have spoken with most and find them delightful, with the exception of those creatures of law. He gestures towards the pair of Abi Shai sitting in the corner. They taint the air with their presence, lending an unwholesome stench to an otherwise pleasant environment. I recommend speaking to Barkus. I understand he requires some aid with a trifling matter. Then, we have that O character. I am still trying to understand him fully. It is quite an undertaking, if I say so myself. Those are the folks of interest here. The others, well, perhaps I am too discriminating. Why do you despise creatures of law? Ah, a fine question, my friend. My upbringing has been on the chaotic side of the Great Ring. You may speak to Candrian Illborn, a misnomer if I've ever heard one, of the plains. He fancies himself a planeswalker. I return from my digression. To return from my digression, I have lived many years with chaos and find it pleasantly agreeable. To me, the taint of law, as in those creatures there, are reprehensible and tyrannical. If I am to be crushed underfoot, I'd rather it be by an individual than a machine that knows nothing but of, of emotion. These are like sensible concepts. It just feels very strange to have them he's just saying law and chaos specifically, like referencing the alignment chart directly. I very much agree. Ilquick smiles toothily, his fat cheeks barely moving. To each his own, I say. Do you have any more questions? Who is that burning man? That? Ha. Huh. That is the last unfortunate who chose to exercise his, his individual will without the strength to back up his desires. His name is Ignis, and he was... He is... was... a pyromaniac. He burned and burned and didn't burn the right people, and wound up channeling more raw power than he could control. Now, well, you can see what became of him. If you wish to learn more of him, perhaps that poor creature Drusilla can help you. He said Barkus, right? Done. What does Barkus need help with? Who are you? Then you're the person to ask questions. What is this place? 
Who is that? Who is that corpse anyway? Hmm? Ignis. He used to be a flame wizard. Burned down pieces of the hive and got himself scragged by a bunch of, of older mages. You want to know more about him? Go talk to Drusilla. What can you tell me of the patrons here? I'll make it a point to interfere with the lives of the people who give me their hard-earned jink unless they ask me to. So, over there is Kandrian, planeswalker. He's a good one to talk to about any planeswalking questions you might have. He's been pretty much everywhere. Down there is Ebb Creek Knees, an old Harmonium Basher. Don't know that. Don't hold that against him. And a tout. He's got a good heart on him, and no sigil up and down. Them fiends over there are our Aethelgrin and, T and Tagarin. Word of advice: don't deal with them. They may be low rankers in the field in the fiend hierarchy, but they're still fiends. Then you got Ilquicks over there, not trustworthy, and some mercy killers looking for some poor sod. Dake on the Githra's eye is a mystery to me. Don't know much about him. He don't talk much. Finally, you interested in some free bub? You you interested in earning some free bub? Yes. There's a bubber over there, uh, over against the far wall, hanging out in the shadows, who's been trying to work up her courage to slip out without covering her tab. I want you to make sure she don't do that. You do it, you get free bub here for life. Alright, I'll let you know when it's done. Ethel Green. Ethel Green and Tagarin. At least meet this person. You see a female dustman. As you're near her, she calls out to you. Um, you, over here. Hey, Cutter. Buy a lady a drink? Poison her drink with the embalming fluid? Wow. I'm down. Who are you? Me? I'm Mochai. I just like to, uh, drink here and, uh, she loses her train of thought momentarily. I'm just a person, you know? Ugh. Normal human sentences. What is this place? Smoldron Corpse Tavern. Can't you read? You, uh, more bub than I am? Who's the burning corpse? He's, uh, not a corpse. He's, uh, uh, some crazy wizard. Ask around. They'll tell you the story. Tell me about the other patrons here. Don't know. They're just, uh, people. I don't deal much with people. Plus, they're buying me a drink. She looks at you, hopefully. Barkus says it's time for you to settle your tab. Pay up. She jumps a little, and her nervous tension becomes full-fledged full -fledged anxiety. But what are you going to do? Ask you to pay up. Now. Uh, I can't afford it. Can you spot me just 10%? I'll, uh, I'll give it to him, and he knows I'll pay the rest. How much do you need? Uh, I think I need a hundred coins to get started on that debt. Every single step is like, poison her, kill her. Can't you think of another solution? Another way to pay? <laughs> she smiles sadly. You could always, uh, kill me. I could, but what's over there? What, do you run away? Like, what the fuck? I could, but I'd rather find another solution. 
She looks at you for a moment longer, swaying where she stands, and then says, Um, alright? Do you want something else? Oh, whatever. I'll lend you the money. Here. Take it and pay up now. She pockets your jink, glances briefly toward the door, almost as if she's weighing her chances of dashing out. Sighs heavily as she realizes there's no chance, and begins to walk glumly towards the bar. Uh... My thanks, I suppose. Don't mention it, and don't even think about heading for the door until you've paid up. I feel like we should keep an eye on her. Or is she not going? She's going to walk as slowly as physically possible, isn't she? Whoa. Oh. Did it trigger like a... a specific song that triggers that menu or something? She could not go slower, holy shit. Here's, uh, some money. I'll bring in more. You better send them after you again. Yeah, it's very threatening when I haven't, uh... <sighs> I'm going. I'm going. You don't have to pester me. I'm sure it's very threatening that I'll be sent after her again when all I did was give her money to give it to him. You won't be having trouble with Mochai again. Then, friend, you have my you have full bar privileges for free. Anything you want, anytime. That must have been a pretty big tab she ran up. You don't know the half of it. You want a drink now? Set me up. Mead. You quaff the weak drink. The flavor isn't exactly bold, but it's filling, and it's alcoholic. It doesn't seem to do anything else for you. That's kind of whatever, but we did it, I guess. This guy's just named O. You see a man standing stock still. He isn't moving a muscle. On closer examination, it appears that he isn't even breathing. Just standing. His eye sockets are empty holes in his face. Contained within their bounds is a flat gray light that seems to dance with possibility. Looking into the sockets, the eerie, empty feeling of a limitless void shivers through you, as, as if you had gazed into a sliver of eternity. The head slowly swivels towards you. You notice that no muscles appear to move under his skin as he turns. And he speaks in a pure, bell-like tone. Well met, Wanderer. You have forgotten again, haven't you? Oh. Do you know me, stranger? As he opens his mouth, you get a feeling of eternity again. Inside of his mouth, you see no tongue, no teeth. It's almost as if this man were a shell surrounding an Ill illimitable expanse. I have spoken with you before, and always you forget. Your endless quest to discover yourself ends always in your amnesia. You draw close to the truth and recoil. Let us hope that you have the strength to endure your existence. The idea that the memory loss is itself a defense against actually learning what he wants to learn. What do you know of me? How do you know this? I know that you, like a fly, rise up from the wreckage of your old shell, buzz about for a time, and curl up and die at the window of truth. You bumble about the pain, seeking the light without any plan to your actions, and fall exhausted when you fail. You alight on others to feed from them for a time, 
and move on with no regard to them. I have watched you come here and listened to your words and watched you move away no wiser. Will you learn from your mistakes, Seeker? I don't like your tone. Though his face does not smile, the humor is evident in his voice. Is your answer to all your problems to fight blindly? Are you no more than a biting insect, or will you achieve a thought at some point in your pitiful existence? Who are you to speak to me this way? I am O. For some reason when he speaks his name, it sounds like he's speaking of much more than a single letter. As if the speaking of his name contained untold possibilities and nuances. No human tongue could ever create such a sound. What sort of name is that? It is my name. It is the name of a portion of eternity. I am a letter in the divine alphabet. Understanding me lends to, exist to understanding existence. I am writ in the true names of half of everything. My being encompasses truth. I am mathematic, organic, metaphysic. So what does that mean? The divine alphabet is writ in the name of everything that exists, from the seed at the hearts of the elemental planes to the core of the great beyond. My brothers, sisters, a single word translates into the two in your mind. I have reach across all that is, was, or ever shall be. We are thought, and reality, and concept, and the unimaginable. You know, we have a word that translates to both brothers and sisters. It's called siblings. Tell me of the great beyond. You would not understand. No mortal possibly could. It is beyond the powers of comprehension of all but the most powerful of powers, and once they understand, they move beyond the veil of mortal comprehension. I can explain it no more than that. Perhaps sometimes you will understand. So what are you doing here? Why, I am watching the ebb and flow of mortality. And what do you see? You mortals are like wasps. You build your lives, nests, from the slimmest of branches, and when the wind shakes your home, life, free, you seek, the sting, you seek to stint the wind to death. Instead of realizing your foolish mistakes, attempting to repair the damage you have caused yourselves, and learning from your experience, you bring harm to any who have the misfortune to blunder near you in your time of pain and distress. My advice to you, and to all mortals. Stop, stop acting like an insect and start acting sentient. What was that you were saying about the divine alphabet? No. Then that means you know all the secrets of existence, doesn't it? I know parts of many of them. Without a connection to my siblings, I am but a letter. Alone, I am a symbol. Combined, we are language and power. So you don't know the secrets of existence. I did not say that. A letter is still a powerful force, even on its own. Allow me to show you. He opens his mouth wider and wider still, the mask of his face tears around his eyes, mouth, and nose, revealing that hint of eternity you glimpsed earlier. You are lost in it, adrift in it, a part of it. You return to your mundane senses and realize that O has vanished, yet somehow your horizons have expanded. Enlightenment has brushed you, however briefly, across to the brow. That was... indescribable. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Even more wisdom, I guess. I guess we're not talking to him anymore. He just tore himself apart to show off, essentially. Just... Uh... 
It's just terrifying pointed scream as he sings the song that ends the earth. Here's the fiends I'm not supposed to talk to. You see a scaled fiend who looks very similar to the one standing next to him. In addition to the pierced left ears, both are black-hued and reptilian, black wings tucked against themselves. This one is missing a tooth on its right side. It sees Anna standing near you and rasps, hissing. Take the little fiendling vermin away and we'll talk. Till then, we say nothing. It spits again for good measure. Okay. They do not like her. Well, we've done gone and, and doubled our party. I'm gone. And now it is time to meet the Awu uh, boys. Also? I don't know if it'll necessarily be better, but the charisma's probably better for the caster than the not caster. But I don't know. What you first took to be a door in this archway is actually is actually a painting. The artist that made use the artist has made use of the shadows of the overhanging arch and some subtle texturing effects to give the door the illusion of substance. Are you sure this is the door, Anna? Aye. It's been speared with, uh, smeared with barmy paints from the starved dogs it has. It's a real door, until you look at it, then it turns into a painting. How did they do that? Anna shrugs. The stranger things in the plains. She suddenly frowns. You might as well ask yourself how you got out of the dead book, after I was sure you were dead. So, this door, I just don't look at it and then open it. Anna glances at the door, then nods. That's the dark of it, if shan't be true. All right, then. I'll do what you say. You just... Hold on. And it stops you before you reach for the door. This is the only path I know to reach the place I found your corpse. And it's not the safest road, I. You sure you're ready? I'm not here to, p to play your minder, no matter what old uh, Stutter Crutch says. What's beyond this door that's so dangerous? Chaos men, Anna whispers. Barmy as they come, barking wild into the day and night, ready to enter paint... Ready to either paint ye with colors or crack your brain box with a chamber pot. Dangerous bloods they are. If they're so dangerous, then how did you get through? I crept in nice and quiet like. Can't paint ye or kill ye when they can't see ye. She looks you up and down with a frown. I doubt I can pull that twice with you around. You look right clumsy, you do. I'm a rogue. Just stay behind me. Let me open the door. You close your eyes, reach for the door and fumble around. To your surprise, you find a handle. With a slight tug, the door opens. A narrow passage leads into the building. And from within, you can hear distant howling. Time to head in. Rut row. Well, there was just a wave of howling when we came in here. I take it that, yeah, it took me a moment to remember, but those were the ghost things that were, came after my where I woke up in the moratorium. And so they're they're chasing after me, and it seems like she's dead, like he's dead now. A painter. You see a slender tiefling girl standing with her back to you. You notice that both her hands and the up-ended table in front of her are smeared with a fresh coat of what appears to be pink paint. 
She seems oblivious to your approach. Greetings. At the sound of your voice, the girl turns her head to regard you. Her face, though somewhat dirty and spattered with drops of pink, is strikingly beautiful. She flashes you a wide, mischievous smile, then returns her attention to the makeshift canvas. I had some questions. This evening, the girl seems totally immersed in her artwork. She ignores you entirely. Well. I'm gone. Ow. Ow, rude. Can you stop? Everybody went away before he texts us next. I'm gone. What's up, Chief? Okay. I'm gone. Might be worth getting rid of the curse soon. Uh, now that we have more than one person with a weapon in the party. Admittedly felt a little more necessary before. So this place's thing is that they're just so crazy. Whoa. Over here, Sybil. Time for some Sybil conversation, huh? You see a figure hidden amid the shadows in the corner of the room. As you draw near, a young woman steps out to reveal herself. She is dressed in a loose-fitted tunic, which, together with your short-cropped hair and slender frame, gives her a rather boyish appearance. I wouldn't go in there if I were you. She nods in the direction of the door to the south wall. Why? What is beyond the door? She winces at the sound of your voice, putting a finger to her lips to indicate silence. She pauses for a moment, then answers in a hushed voice. A whole mess of them howling lunatics, that's what. Looks like they're having some sort of gathering. Won't be able to get through the alley until they clear out. Howling lunatics? Is there an echo in here? Yes, howling lunatics. They belong to the Starved Dog Barking Gang, a band of barmy Shousetect thugs that plague this part of the hive. How many of them are in there? I counted about a dozen of them. Of course, I was peeking through a crack in the door, so I could be off by a handful or so. A dozen or so? That's hardly a challenge. Look, you can play here if you want, but leave me out of it. I'm staying right here. If by some miracle you don't get your innards stomped out by those animals in there, maybe I'll see you around. She turns and slips back into the shadows of the corner. Farewell. Tiresias. You see an aging man dressed in tattered rags. As you draw near, you discover that he is missing both his eyes. The scarred tissue of his eyelids has receded into his empty sockets, giving his features the macabre appearance of a, a decaying skull. Greetings. The old man turns in your general direction, his arms outstretched as if feeling for you. Darkness? Who be in voice? The friend words I'll speak of you and call chaos. Huh? The old man cocks his head to one side, his sightless gaze fixed on empty space. 
chaos of you are not, not, pot, snot. Uh, you're not making any sense. Walk, not talk. Talk is complete. Completed to completion. He turns his back to you, apparently done with the conversation. It's obvious this is getting me nowhere. Farewell. So quick to threaten. The, the two options half the time are give up or threaten. I don't know, maybe we could have figured him out if we really tried. What's up? Good is done. I want them to be nearby, but I don't want them to be right there. Because if I open a door and a fight starts, I want him to aggro on the enemy, not them. That staircase will go somewhere. This door is locked and requires a key. Here comes the bads, here comes the bads. Let's get them. You guys can obliterate this guy. Oh, he, he went first. All right. Meanwhile, all of us combined are struggling to keep up with this guy. It is still... cursed, right? Yeah, it causes user to go berserk in combat. I just noticed that he had a green... He aggroed, but he had a green circle around him, like I could still control him. Which is not usually how that works before. He's supposed to go yellow. And we were all yellow. <laughs> Come on over here, bud. Come make some life mistakes, why don't ya? Yep, now he's yellow. What? Good is done. Nope, don't hit me. It seems our fighter mage character takes damage relatively quickly. I've been reminded that uh, having a high armor class is bad. Yeah, the lower it is, the harder it is to hit you. So he's one of the hardest ones to hit. Well, these two characters have over 50 health. And he only has 33. Yeah, both of his classes are a level weaker than Anna. So maybe he's a bit under leveled compared to others here. Toilet! Wow, the toilet was full of treasure. I'm a toilet man. Alright. <laughs> Well, everyone's in here right now, but it seems like it might be a bad idea to go in there. I might become extremely dead. So I might want to go upstairs instead. A tenement of thugs. Done. This door goes nowhere. Blue quality dagger. Doesn't have to be identified either. Bone dagger, one to six piercing, one enchanted. Piercing damage, stack up plus one, speed two. But she can't use this, can't she? Nope. No one can use these good weapons I'm finding. One to six piercing is pretty good. It's not three to eight piercing, but it would 
Stop making me go crazy. This one also has poison and Thacko plus two. This one has Thacko plus one, but it's also enchanted. It might be good enough to justify switching over just to stop being cursed the whole time. At least later. Item cannot be unequipped. Oh, I mean the other dagger. It's trying to switch to it. Ah! Friends. Oopsie. Oh. Damn it. Wow. Die. What's up? Good is done. Done. Well now. He really does go down that easily. Endure. In enduring, grow strong. Reign of anger, submerge the will, power of one. Xanthamon teachings allow the channeling of anger into streams of unerring missiles that quickly strike those that oppose you. The spell summons a magic missile that strikes its opponent, the target unerringly for three to six points of damage with no saving throw possible. So this is magic missile, basically, right? In addition, the caster gains one extra missile every two levels. Oh yeah, that's exactly what ma how magic missile works. Also, it said magic missile in the description a little bit. Submerge the will. When the will is submerged, the strength is gained. The strength to endure and protect against adversity. With knowing the teachings of the third circle of Zerthamon, it comes greater protection against all forms of attack. When cast, a magical orb of protective energy arises and protects its, the recipient from attacks from all directions. It bestows an AC... Two against all attacks and plus one to saving throws for 12 seconds divided by the level of the, of the caster. Oh, per per level, not <laughs> divided by would be bad. It would get it would get faster. Power of one touch. 30 minutes per level. And the gith, and from gith the warrior queen came, the knowing of oneself, and from the knowing came immense power. This spell increases the target's strength score by a certain number of points, or tenths of points, which still, which will still be qualified by race class restrictions. Okay. Power bonus to you. Look at them giant biceps. Look at you go. Very proud of you. Anyway. Wow, he's instantly- you. you are instantly dying. Yeah. Ah, great. I hope he doesn't lose his memories this time. God damn. Are you well? Did I get crit? He did not die like that crit. last time. He went down like instantly. of anger. Let's try this. Pew pew. What's up, Chief? What's the word, Chief? What's up? God damn, they are killing the shit out of him. Slattered. Damn. I'm gone. I can see why our weaker character died so abruptly, because apparently my main character can too. 
he just didn't the first time, like things went fine by comparison the first time, and then he did he just started getting torn apart. Here, you can carry all of my rings. Isn't that exciting? What are our alignments? Chaotic good. Normal good. Or I'm sorry. Chaotic neutral. Lawful neutral. That's like... Imagine being such a centrist. Okay. Are these used up at this point? He only has one spell slot per thing. Anger and will. Anger, steel, will, Vicar's eye. Scripture of steel. One of the earliest teachings of Zarathamon, the incantation reflects what knowing that flesh yields to steel achieves. Reflects what knowing that f flesh yields to steel achieve. What? Bestowing a greater advantage to strike and the strength to resist damage. Plus one to hit, plus one to saving throws onto all creatures that are friendly to the caster in a seven foot radius from the casting point for 30 seconds. Big ol' AoE. Bilquar's Eye. Vilkar's eye is, is branded upon the one who is foolish enough to cross the caster. Vilkar's short-sightedness becomes the target's vision, and soon the world is muddled and dark. If the targeted creature fails at saving throw at, at minus one penalty, the creature will be struck with blindness. Okay, so blindness. And those are memorization options. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, please aggro on one of them. Things seem a little unwell. What's up, Chief? Try to eat him. The music cut out and then laughing happened? True. Things got weird. Cut him up before we get in trouble. That mage is a problem. Oh, you're not aggroed. You need to be attacking something, please. the mage. You can specifically prevent them from casting, too. Get away from him! Okay. Could have gone worse. Also, ow. Tenement key. That was like a local mini boss. Like that's I need to defeat that one to get through some door somewhere. But also ow. Well these don't heal very much, do they? Oh, 
Yeah, much bigger effect on his tiny health bar. I haven't been using the heals very much because they're hiding away on my character that uh, loses control the moment a fight starts. Yeah. Oh, the fight's over. All right. All right. I'm not always sure how best to handle fights. A lot of my party doesn't necessarily feel massively well equipped for a lot of this. But I try to make do. Only used by Nameless One and Mort, I guess, because they're the corpsey people. I did decide you would be the ringy person. All right. You need a key, so that's not the key we got. The small plain key is fashioned of wrought iron and appears to be of no particular value. Well, it opens something, just not where I want it to. But I believe I've been in everywhere except for this big room. But if I'm going in there, I think I'm going to need a na uh, rest first. And by rest, I mean, let's listen to a long story. This guy really does a public service. <laughs> I'm sad that I can't give my armor class mage earrings to my mage. But also, I've never been able to... Where, where do I get equipment in this game? Like... I don't think I've ever played a game for an RPG this long and not had any gear to wear on my characters. Like, like armor. Like, look, there's like, there's this, this an armor slot. I've never seen armor in this game. Mort's health bar is so big that he doesn't normally actually get healed by this. Just a quirk to deal with there. Done. It's a bit tempting to... hmm. I might as well buy, might as well buy another tattoo. Uh, Anna, what's wrong? Are you daft? Anna turns to you, and you suddenly realize she's frightened. Are you so pig eager to dance in the lady's shadow? You'll bland, you'll bandy words with this one. Let's give this place a laugh before we get penned in the dead book. What's what's the problem? It's fell. Anna throws a fearful glance at the creature. Presumably fell. Let's be away, I No good'll come from being here, no it so it won't. I'll ask again, what's the problem? 
He's a Dabus who's not a Dabus, I. He walks on the ground. Anna's voice drops to a whisper. And she starts trembling. No more questions. Let's give this place the laugh, the laugh, I. Anna, no harm will come to you while I'm here. Now tell me what's wrong. Anna throws a frightened glance at Fel. Fel's a Dabus who angered her. It's said he's a Dabus who isn't a Dabus, and it's time, and the time's close when the lady, lady's gaze will fall on him. So it will. Lady? You mean the Lady of Pain? Aye. And heed her t your tongue. Anna makes another semicircle in the air in front of her as you mention the Lady's name. The Dabus work for the Lady, and she protects them. Except Fell. She shudders. Let's be away, aye? I'd like to speak to Fell first. Anna grabs your arm. Please! Nay! Nay! No good will come of it. Anyone speaking to Fel could draw the lady's gaze. I don't want to die, I don't. To your surprise, Anna looks close to tears. Lie to silence her crying. Promise. Anna, no harm will come to you while I'm here, I promise. I just want to speak to him for a moment. For a minute, Anna just looks at you. Then something in your gaze seems to calm her, for she steals herself. I don't know why I... She shakes her head. Go on, then. Talk to him. I don't... I do not care. There's an undercurrent of fear in her voice. Dekon, can you translate for me? Dekon nods. He mentioned that he'd met me before. Does he know how I died? Fel does not respond for a moment, then slowly, menacingly, three symbols materialize above his head, each of them casting a long shadow. You think he's saying something about shadows? What did he say, Dacon? Shadows. Shadows? The three symbols swirl around each other, each leaving a faint, misty, black trail around them. Then take on a ragged edge, like teeth and talons, and multiply. Three split into three, then three again, until the entire room seems covered by a swarm of shadows. He seems to be saying that you were killed by many shadows. What did it say, Dekon? He says many shadows came for you. Their reason for taking your life is not known to him. I was starting to think that his translation would just add nothing or something. So the shadows are probably the weird ghost things that killed her father in that last cutscene, most likely. Echo plus one, accuracy. Tattoo of Anna of the Shadows? Plus to dexterity, minus to charisma and wisdom. Pickpocket, skill bonus, stealth, open locks, detect traps. Only usable by a thief, nameless one. Some of Anna's presence must be rubbing off on you, for this tattoo, will, tattoo allows you to call upon some of her cat-like skills and grace to hone your thief abilities. Unfortunately, it also inherits some of Anna's brashness and impulsiveness, reducing your charisma and wisdom accordingly. Hmm. The tattoo of the Bone Singer. AC is probably worth nabbing. A 
would like to make this person harder to hit. It's so confusing that AC plus 2 takes it from 2 to 0. Like, plus 2 means number go up, but actually number go down, because they made this as confusing as possible, honestly. You can see why they never did it this way again. Well, she did not like him. And for, little does she know her fears are misplaced and she's much more under threat elsewhere. All right. Huh? Okay. Oh boy, it's a whole lot of them. It sure is. What? Okie dokie. This is not happening. No. Nope. I hope he doesn't lose his memories this time. Looks like beauty sleep hasn't helped you any. Okay, so that's a pretty unreasonable situation. We're not fighting our way through that. There's just way too many enemies, and I don't have like a grenade. Did I ever find the source of the bodies? I never got this guy's knife either. Cause I'd have to like attack that guy potentially. When I returned the bronze sphere to old stutter crutch Farad, he hemmed and hawed about what he really knew about me, which was precious little. He did tell me that his daughter had in, in quotes had to recover my body and told me where it had been found. We should probably go there and see if there's any clues to be found. Apparently my body was found in the alleyway in the section of the hive near the smoldering corpse bar, but there's a tenement full of chaos men that lie between me and it. So this alley is between me and the alley. So do I am I trying to get past that door basically? I was you wanted. So, where's the place where you found my body? There's a strange alley on the far side of the barking dog cackle house. That's where we need to head, it is. There's a door in the back of the tenement we can head through. Strange alley? What do you mean by that? Some Burks with less courage than name say it's all a haunted it is. Anna spits and makes a semicircle over her heart. It's wash. Sometimes the wind blows through the alley and makes weird la sighing noises, but that doesn't mean there's specters and haunts and the like. Anna, did you find anything on my body before you brought it to the mortuary? Anna looks at you warily. Her tail stops flicking a moment, then resumes slower than before. I mayhap I found something, but if I found anything, it's mine by right, it is. The other bits are in Farrell's keeping. Anna, I don't have time for games. What did you find on my corpse? Well... You had some fist irons, you did, and a little bit of jink, but I left that for the dusty so they'd think I, I was a wee bit honest. You had an ugly ring that I kept. She dips her finger into her arm braces and pulls forth a small ring with a stone mounted on it, worth thrice more than the jink and the irons it was. She studies the ring and squints. Too bad it's too ugly to wear. I'd like that ring back now. She studies the ring with a frown, glances at you, then back at the ring. With a sneer, she flicks the ring at you. Didn't I want the ugly thing anyway, didn't it? I didn't. Uh, didn't I want the th ugly thing anyway, I didn't. There you go, I'm so good at voices, it's so doable. Fine. Now when you mentioned that some stuff from my body had gone into Pharaoh's keeping, what did you mean? I, Pharaoh takes a bit off each corpse we find he does. It's his right, being lord of the village and all. Off of every corpse you will find, that's a lot of corpses. Oh, aye. To hear tell, old Stutter Crutch has got a stash pit somewhere close to him. See, it's the only reason I can see why he's set up Kip in that filthy, drafty hall it is. 
Nothing but stinking shadows. Really? And that's where he puts the tribute he gets. Aye. She squints at you. Now what's he on about? You planning to bob him? No. I've no cause to do such a thing. Pharaoh's done me no harm. Well, good. I'm warning you against such a thing. I am. Pharaoh can be daft sometimes, but he's mean as old fiend spit when he gets worked up. She frowns. And he loves his keepsakes, he does. But where would he keep it all? If he's been at the village for as long as he says, he would have amassed quite a collection. Well, Anna's silent for a moment. I know he's never left his hall to get his tribute when he needed it. He wouldn't want to walk far with that lame leg of his, though. Aye, that's true. But only if you don't watch him careful. He isn't lame, though. He puts on a fair bit of show about being weak in his leg. So why does he carry that crutch? Anna shrugs. I dunno. She nods at you. You might as well tell... You might as well ask why you have bones running around your waist, you do. Because I was designed by a character artist. Why didn't you just outright ask about the journal? That's what we're actually looking for. Otherwise we're just kind of like... Dancing around a bit. Oh well.